phone. You can't turn your phone. We'll take. Are we here? Yes. Yeah. Are we live? Mm -hmm. I guess we're live. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Father Tom Meyer, and next to me is Deacon, Deacon. Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're here on a Saturday morning, so I, I would imagine maybe our, our viewership is slightly lower this morning. It is a Saturday morning, but maybe not. Um, this is the Saturday, the fourth week of Lent. Uh, tomorrow is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Uh, tomorrow we'll be hearing the uh, gospel of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Um, so we still have one more full week of Lent coming up next week before Holy Week arrives. And uh, news from um, last evening here in Jacksonville, there are two additional uh, positive reports of the coronavirus here in Jacksonville just received uh, a report last night that there are two additional cases, which brings our local total to three positive coronavirus cases here in Jacksonville. So one is in Passivant, and then the two new ones are uh, quarantined, quarantined at home. So in a, in a particular way, we want, to, we want to pray for them and their healing and for their families. So that was new news last night. Deacon Pavel, do you have any news to share? No. We're praying for you, your coming ordination mm -hmm. on Saturday, just like today, Saturday, May 23rd. So he's now less than 60 days away. Yeah. So we're praying for Deacon Pavel and seven others who will be ordained priests for the Springfield Diocese <clears throat> this coming May 23rd. So we're excited for Deacon Pavel, who will soon be Father Pavel. So, um, um, so this we are. The, this is the Saturday Mass of the fourth week of Lent. So, let us now worship. name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're happy to gather today to celebrate this, our Saturday of our fourth week of Lent. We begin the celebration now by acknowledging our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of your mercy, O Lord, we pray, direct our hearts aright. For without your grace, we cannot find favor in your sight. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I knew their plot because the Lord informed me. At that time, you, O Lord, showed me their doings. Yet I, like a trusting lamb, led to slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. Let us destroy the tree in his vigor. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will be spoken no more. But you, O Lord of hosts, O just judge, searcher of mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and rescue me, lest I become like the lion's prey to be torn to pieces with no one to rescue me. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Do me justice, O Lord, because I am just and because of the innocence that is mine. Let the malice of wicked come to an end, but sustain the just, O search of heart and soul, O just God. O Lord and my God, in you I take refuge. A shield before me is God, who saves the upright of heart. A just God is God, a God who comes day by day. O Lord and my God, in you I take refuge. Jesus said, This is truly the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But others said, The Christ will not come from Galilee, will he? Does not the scriptures say that the Christ will be David's family and come from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So a division occurred in the crowd because of him. Some of them even wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. So the guards went to the chief priests and Pharisees to ask them, Why did you not bring him? The guards answered, Never before had anyone spoken like this man. So the Pharisees answered them, Have you also been deceived? Have any of the, of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not, the, does not know the law, is uh, accursed. Nicodemus, one of the members who had come to him earlier, said to them, Does our law condemn a man before it first hears him and finds out what he is doing? They answered and said to him, You are not from Galilee also, are you? We can see that no prophet arise from Galilee. And each went to his own house. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we hear from our, our Jewish leaders again who will uh, eventually uh, hand Jesus over uh, to Pontius Pilate. And uh, they're, they're asking the question, you know, is, you, how can this Jesus um, be someone we place our faith in? And, and they first of all come up with the idea, uh, okay, the, the, the Messiah is supposed to come from, from Bethlehem, Judea. Um, we know that Jesus comes from Nazareth. How can we place our, our faith in, in, in someone from Galilee? And so they're really hung up on anyone from Galilee ever being, being considered a prophet or definitely not the Messiah, but anyone from Galilee. And, and, and in a sense, we're hearing uh, just the total contempt uh, that the Jewish leaders have for anyone even trying to be open-minded uh, to what Jesus is trying to say. They're, they're, they're just a complete... Uh, 
shut down in the minds that uh, anything that Jesus is saying, it, it's just rather interesting how much, I'm going to use the word contempt, uh, how much contempt uh, these, these Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees have for anyone who doesn't think like them. Uh, they have contempt for the guards uh, who realize that, that this man Jesus has teaching that we never heard, heard like before. We, we, we never heard anything like this. So contempt for the, for the guards. Uh, why didn't you bring Jesus in to, to arrest him? Uh, they had contempt for the, the crowds. Um, they think they're just, they're, they're silly. They don't know, they're, they're ignorant. Uh, they don't know the law. Uh, we can't, you know, we can't trust what they're saying. Then even Nicodemus, one of their own, who's trying to simply be, uh, to, give, to give Jesus the right of, of, of the law, um, and as soon as, you know, we should, should we at least hear him before we, we, we find him guilty? Should we at least hear him? I mean, he, Nic, Nic, Nicodemus, even though uh, he is a secret, uh, secretly really interested, um, simply wants to give Jesus the right of the law. Uh, he ought to be heard before we find him guilty. And uh, even Nicodemus, they say, uh, are you even, even a secret follower too? But... The common denominator I, I, we hear from the, 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 the Pharisees is contempt for anyone uh, they hear that doesn't think like them. Uh, utter contempt in their hearts. And so I, the, the challenge, I think, the challenge for us would be uh, there are many people, many people uh, who don't, do not think like us uh, individually. Um, all of us are unique and, and different, how we think, how we process information, how we believe, um, and we're all, we're all needing conversion. And I, I believe that uh, obviously following Jesus and following all that he teaches us, but, but being open, open, and we can still, criti you know, we still have good minds, we still can critically think through um, what we hear, uh, but being open to people, open, just open the dialogue, open, open. Uh, to talking to people, listening to people, hearing people uh, who don't necessarily think like we do. Um, sometimes that openness, of, of, that openness, a dialogue can lead to conversion, uh, their conversion, and mine. We now present to our Lord these our prayers. For the church, may the Lord fortify and sustain her in her prophetic witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public authority, may the Holy Spirit grant them discerning hearts to know His will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are isolated by illness or age, May the grace of God's presence among them bring them consolation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves and our families and loved ones, may the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us conform us evermore to the heart and mind of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, may all who have died in the light of faith be welcomed into the everlasting joy found in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul, dog, Egbert. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear. For the special attention of the dog, Egbert, uh, for him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray also for the, those who are suffering from the coronavirus, uh, those who have been tested positive, and in particular way, those here in our Jacksonville community, uh, these three who have this virus, that they might find healing through Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing these prayers. Keep us always, Lord Jesus, open to you and hearing your word from you and from others. For which we ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, in work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, with these oblations you receive from our hands, and even when our wills are defiant, constrain them mercifully to turn to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, in participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the glory hymn of your glory, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we will use Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation number two. The Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation number two. You, therefore, Almighty Father, be blessed through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled to the Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice, a blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do 
this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything, that estranges us from one another. May you make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may you keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Thomas John our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity and the new heaven and the new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's commands, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And at this moment, we now prepare to join uh, in a spiritual communion with our Lord present here in his blessed sacrament. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
by the precious blood of Christ, the blood of a spotless and unblemished lamb, we have been redeemed. Let us pray. May your holy gifts purify us, O Lord, we pray, and by the working render us fully pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And just one announcement uh, tomorrow's Mass, being Sunday, uh, will not be 8 o'clock, it will be 9 o'clock in the morning, so uh, please tune in uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. And uh, the homily, the, the gospel will be the Jesus is raising, raising of Lazarus, but the homily will be on commandments 4 and 5. Uh, commandment 4, uh, honor your father and mother. We're, we're talking about uh, what the church sees um, in the beauty of family life. And then commandment 5, uh, thou shalt not kill, uh, looking at the church's teachings on the, on the dignity of every human life. So that will be tomorrow at 9 o'clock a.m. Please bow your heads for the blessing. Look upon your people, O Lord, and as they draw near to the coming festivities, bestow upon them abundance of heavenly grace, that helped by the consolations of this world, they may be impelled more readily towards higher goods that cannot be seen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go. Go in peace, glorifying your Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Say, Michael, Lord, the Archangel, defend Lord, us in Lord. battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.